Good morning, Bruce Wolf and Dan Proffer coming down to the closing minutes of the gubernatorial campaign and uh, joining us in the studio is State Senator Bill Brady. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. So um, this is your last chance right here. You know I've been on a fence. Uh, you know I, I think you're the best candidate. I loved in that one debate, everybody was asked about the... Uh, what's termed the so-called anti-gay legislation of Arizona, you were the only candidate, you were the only one who actually said, well, let's look at this legislation and how can we word something. Everybody else ducked it. Bruce Runner didn't want to talk about it at all. He's got to have a laser-like focus on the economy. And Kirk was uh, saying, I think, that he's for the Cardinals and the Cubs and the, uh, and the White Sox in answer to that question. But, and, he's, uh, and, he's, and he's for yeah. the unions and the taxpayers. Right. And so the, I love that that you did that. You're right on all the issues. You missed it by that much last time against Quinn. But I don't know, maybe it's Rauner's time, uh, I guess, and he's going to really uh, hit with that hammer, and he's shake got up, some momentum shake it up and, and all, all that, that. Yeah. so give us your last pitch. <laughs> well, I, Bruce, even you are going to retire. So you want your income, your retirement income tax? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> this is a reference, of course, to last night at the debate. He opened the door, apparently, to the possibility. Let's not... Uh, uh, and here's yeah. what I don't so the think. possibility that, 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 that we could tax a you retirement. Either, you either fundamentally believe that taxes are hurting our economy, or you're willing to pander to the Democrats to try to come up with some plausible solution. We have got to reduce the tax burden. If we tax retirement income, we're just going to lose more people to Florida and Texas. That's our problem. We're bleeding people and jobs. And so we need someone who's got a proven track record. I've got a 100% pro-taxpayer voting record uh, when it comes to protecting taxpayers because it creates jobs. Uh, you're a conservative, self-described as such. Um, I think you're perceived as perhaps the most conservative candidate in the race, and yet you've got a lot of Tea Party groups that are supporting Bruce Rauner. You've got uh, pro-life groups and the Rifle Association supporting Kirk Dillard. Um, how do you explain that? Well, uh, you know, Kirk Dillard has sold out to the unions, let's face it. He's sold out uh, to some extent to the pro-life groups and to the Second Amendment groups. Uh, it's he's a, He's double-talked his way into this. There's only one candidate with a 100% pro-life voting record, and that's me. Uh, there's only, and, and then think about pro-life. Kirk Dillard ran an ad for Barack Obama. This is the only guy in the only Senate who voted against the partial birth abortion ban. Kirk, Barack, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. We, thank you for clearing that up. But, but Kirk Dillard's support of him, after he knew he wanted to pass national health care, just shows a complete lack in judgment and character. And he flip-flops on issues back and forth. Now he's pandered to the unions. You guys, I know, didn't agree with my pension vote necessarily or what I constructed, but we save $180 billion. Kirk Diller was for it before he was against it. Uh, he sold out to the unions there. You, you see, you've talked about how they now own Kirk Dillard in terms of this campaign and how he's ever going to tell them that he won't support their biggest initiative, the progressive income tax, is just beyond me. You've got to have some principles. When it comes to Bruce Rauner, um, you, you, do we really want... Rahm Emanuel and City Hall controlling state government. I mean, let's face it, these two are locked at the hip. Chicago Sun-Times, same donor base. Uh, we really don't know much more about Bruce Rauner than some of his business dealings and the fact that his biggest political ally is Rahm Emanuel. I think the voters realize we need more than that. I will say, everyone's infatuated when a billionaire rides down in his Harley from Chicago and portrays himself to be something, but at the end of the day, people don't know. I was traveling in southern Illinois, and several occasions people said, I'm here today to support you, and I've taken down my Bruce Rauner sign. I've taken down my Kirk Dillard sign. You're the real deal. You're the reliable I, Republican. I, I guess one of the problems is, is that, you know, if you believe the polls, it doesn't look like you have a really good shot at it. So... I don't know I'm whether to vote. Buy. I don't know whether to vote for you because I just want to up your total because that's uh, I, I'm a diehard with you, yeah. or just to help show that Bruce Rauner really is invincible and can beat Pat Quinn. I mean, it's a strategic yeah. vote as far as I'm concerned because I'm with you totally on the issues. Well, let's look at the last election. Uh, I was in fourth place in the last election. You wouldn't you wouldn't bet one political dollar on the polling data that people are using in terms of strategy. We didn't last time. I've got a great pollster, Mike McEwen's his name. He polls in Illinois. We do live interviews. There's a reason these polls come out so often. They're cheap, and you get what you pay for. But base voters, I can tell you, Bruce Rodgers bought a lot of name ID, and that's what those polls show, but they're not going to turn out. Well, where do you have the race? We think we're within the margin of error based on turnout of Bruce Rodgers. And we think Kirk Dillard's numbers are way down. He, he, he crippled himself terribly by selling out to the unions. And then when you couple that with the Barack Obama ad, 
Uh, when you look at the real voters and Republican primary voters, but we don't see the turnout being very high, Dan. We, uh, we don't see that. In fact, some of even the more contentious races are pushing people away. The fact there's not a Democratic primary pushes people away from the vote entirely. So we, we, do, we do project, our polling data projects, a record low turnout. And our voters are going to turn out. What, um, what, what, what do you say? So your vote makes a difference. I won by eight votes my first election. Dan, I what? think he's put me over. I, should I believe this selling job well, he just did? Well, what, do you, what do you say to, uh, to a lot of Republican primary voters that may like you and may agree with you on a lot of issues, but say, essentially, Bill Brady had his chance against Pat Quinn. He uh, lost an election he should have won in 2010, and uh, it's time for somebody new. Yeah, well, and that's... The only thing Kirk Dillard and the only thing Bruce Warner can say, because they're not right with the Republican primary voters on the issues, I am. But the fact of the matter is, we're building on a base. Look at Jeb Bush. Lost by 60,000 votes his first time in Florida. Big state like Illinois. Turns around and wins. Same campaign. People knew him better. I was relatively unknown, as you well know. We went from 150,000 to 1.8 million votes. We've The only campaign that's got the base, Bobby Jindal, same deal, had to run twice in that state to get to be known, to be able to win on the issues. But let's look at Pat Quinn. Honeymoon period. I mean, he was in the middle of a honeymoon. Here's a guy, though, that, frankly, needs to be investigated federally. He took $50 million in taxpayer money, created a slush fund that had a turnout in the city of Chicago of 50% when the statewide average outside of Chicago was 47. We're not going to deal with those shenanigans. He's also proven that he can't be trusted. If you're a union member, you can't trust him because he promised he wouldn't touch your pensions. And what's he do? Uh, he lied to him.